Hello and welcome to the National Museum of Computing's online Q&A. As you may be aware, we've been uh, asking you, the public, to come to us with your questions over the last week or so. And we've got some really good ones coming in. Of course, we want more, so submit them as we move along in, in our uh, video Q&As. Simon Crow uh, uh, shot us a, a question via uh, Twitter. Um, no one has ever explained how the bomb actually decided messages. Uh, I don't know if it means decoded messages. Um, please explain question mark. Um, let's, let's decode his question a little bit. Uh, what, how did it work in a way that um, people could, could really get to really quickly? What did it do? Why was it different? And um, did it really decrypt messages? What, what's the story on that? Essentially what the bomb does is to find the key of the day. Um, the Enigma machine uh, had uh, a setting which the Germans distributed to uh, all of the units in a particular area, um, a, a, a setting which they all used for 24 hours. And uh, at midnight Berlin time, uh, it was changed. Um, and so uh, the challenge for the uh, team at Bletchley Park uh, each night was to collect up a set of messages um, early in the morning and then try in a matter of a few hours to use the bomb and other machines as well to decode the message, find the key of the day, find other settings and then they were able for the rest of the 24 hours to read the German Enigma traffic and they became extremely skilled at doing that. This was naval traffic I think wasn't it Rob? No it, it was all of the traffic, the naval traffic the, the German Navy, um, for various reasons, partly they were dubious about the security of the uh, rotor, of the machine, the Enigma machine that was used by the Army and the Air Force and which had three rotors. The German Navy decided to use a system, a machine uh, very similar, but with four rotors. And it took uh, a year mm -hmm. less in the middle of the war for uh, the uh, experts of Bletchley Park to actually break that code and a great many ships were sunk during that period while they desperately tried to work out uh, how the uh, the wiring basically of the rotors in the naval Enigma. But the Enigma... Uh, it's important to point out because I think a lot of people especially they've seen the film with uh, Ben Cumberbatch and they kind of the um, the Enigma device is a very important device but then uh, there was obviously, we're talking here about Bob, and we've just been talking about Colossus. They were different code breaking ship machines for different co encoding devices, weren't they? I think this is an important distinction to make for the wider world. Yes. The, the, the key thing to understand is that Colossus broke um, a high level uh, a cipher that was used um, by, the, uh, by Hitler and the senior commanders, and a great deal of that traffic were uh, discussions uh, and instructions um, about uh, strategic issues relating uh, the level of generals and field marshals. The, the Enigma machine, uh, uh, and there were thousands and thousands of these in the field, these were the machines that you needed when you had mobile warfare. Yeah. And, uh, units were moving uh, day by day uh, panzer divisions and so on, uh, air, air, aircraft, um, uh, th that uh, the, the Air Force uh, and indeed, for example, the submarines. You needed to be able to send instructions um, in, in a sense like a chess game, uh, move that uh, division from there to there, move this submarine, the submarines will assemble at this point and intercept the Allied mm. convoy. Uh, these were messages that were sent daily uh, and also uh, very helpfully uh, in terms of what happened for Bletchley Park was the Germans also used uh, these machines for routine traffic the other way. So light ships um, would send messages early in the morning saying visibility is quite good and we haven't seen anything, nothing to report. Um, because of the way the Enigma machine was broken using cribs, basically the Bletchley Park uh, code breakers 
guessed what these messages were, not least because many of them were sent over and over again, weather forecasts uh, and, and, form, uh, and, and regular reports. Uh, mm -hmm. They could guess what, the, what some of these messages, what the words were. And that was a yeah. huge help uh, in being able to uh, decipher uh, and break the, code, break the code, break the setting of the day. Sorry, to answer the question that we were actually asked. Um, yeah, was, yeah. There is an extremely, uh, there, there is a very good book written by Dermot Turing, who is the nephew of Alan Turing. Dermot Turing has written a very good book called Demystifying the Bomb. <coughs> um, a, a few years ago now, and uh, with assistance from the bomb team, uh, that which was then at Lake Park, but is now at the National Museum of Computing. Yeah. Um, and he is in the process, uh, and we hope by the time the COVID closure finishes, uh, he will have written a new and updated guidebook uh, for the bomb. And that does explain in great detail um, how the uh, Enigma codes were broken day by day. Mm. Uh, the team also uh, at, at uh, TNMOC uh, periodically has accepted challenges when uh, GCHQ on one occasion, uh, a German museum on another one, uh, we, we had a message sent by a, a group in Poland, uh, they send uh, a message and the team at uh, TNMOC break the, that message uh, and generally speaking, can do it in roughly the same time uh, that the teams took during the war. Uh, mm. So it is well understood and it has been written up and Dermot Turing's Demystifying the Bomb uh, is an excellent place to go. It's written to be readable uh, and I would strongly recommend that. It's now out of print but is mm. available um, on online uh, and the new guidebook uh, I'm sure will be even better uh, since uh, this will be, I think, the third time that Dermot has told that story. And I think it's an important distinction to point out the contribution by the, the Poles in this story as well, because they'd had exposure to the, uh, the Enigma device uh, for years and years in the run-up to the war, and they've been working on it. So in, in many ways, Turing gets, um, rightly so, gets a lot of the credit for his work, but much of that, well, to an extent, maybe you could qualify, quantify, is the foundations of that come from the work that the, the, the Polish intelligence services did right up to the start of the war. Basically, without them, uh, we almost certainly, the Allies would almost certainly not have been able uh, to have broken the Enigma code. Certainly, it would have taken a great deal of time. But the Poles had done it without seeing a German Enigma machine. It was all done uh, as a quite extraordinary and quite fantastic uh, mathematical uh, exercise by Mario mm. Jeski. Uh, together with two colleagues and we will be putting up shortly on the TNMOC website in the bomb section uh, we will be putting up a film which does give in 15 minutes an introduction to this massive uh, Polish contribution which is much uh, neglected uh, I have to say that the Cumberbatch film um, is good entertainment but its connection with history is mm. peripheral. Um, it, it really doesn't uh, explain uh, or do justice uh, mm. to what actually happened. Um, it's best forgotten, frankly. 